Um, so the question says, uh, consider the Compton effect in the scattering of electromagnetic radiation from an electron. And so the Compton scattering is a very specific scenario. Um, it illustrates the particle nature of light really well because the photons um, in the description in the description of collision, if you think of it as a photon, the particle scattering with a, a stationary electron, then um, then it just makes perfect sense. There's really nothing to explain. Um, it's but it's much harder to explain when you try to do it from the perspective of the classical electromagnetic wave point of view. So so we bring in Compton effect at this point in the semester to show you, hey, this is uh, an evidence of the particle nature of light, one. Two, this effect actually involves special relativity. And so it, this is the perfect place where you already know about special relativity and you are now beginning to learn about quantum mechanics. That's the place to talk about Compton effect. Now, what I will say is the Compton scattering formula, it's a, um, it's not an easy formula to drive. I think I've uh, tried to drive the formula, you know, on my own several times, um, you know, I guess way back when, when I was GSI. And um, I, like about half the time I do it wrong and kind of get stuck in an algebraic hell. And um, so I think I say this in the lecture, there's a really, one exactly right way to drive Compton formula, and that's the way it's done in the lecture. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do for the purpose of uh, solving this question, I'm not going to uh, try to bother redriving the Compton formula because I know it takes too long and you just have to go through the exact right set of steps. So what I'm instead going to do is I'm gonna going to scroll to the expression, I think that's the equation 6.28. And I'm just gonna copy this Compton scattering formula. Now, what I, as I'm copying it, what I am going to remember is that, well, one, it's hard, easy to see because it's right there. The presence of this Planck's constant H, um, it indicates that it involves quantum mechanics. And the other thing that I will just have to try to remember is that even though it doesn't, explicit, well, even though here, I don't see gamma as one of the terms, it's actually uh, relativistically correct. In the derivation of this formula, relativity was taken into account. So with that uh, intro, let me just uh, copy over the formula. Sorry, I need to know where the white space is on the other screen, around there. Okay, so <laughs> around there, so <laughs> where I'm gonna copy it over. Um, so it uh, lambda prime is the wavelength of the photon after the collision, and lambda is the wavelength of the incoming photon. So, um, and I think this quantity is guaranteed to be positive. So this indicates that, oh, the wavelength of the scattered photon is always gonna be longer. Um, and if you uh, remember section 6.2 that <laughs> corresponds to the photon having, the scattered photon having less energy. Uh, so that is equal to H over the rest mass of the colliding particle in our question, electron, so electron times the speed of light and one minus cosine theta. Um, in the derivation I do in the lecture, I'm driving for the case where theta is equal to 180 degree. That's uh, what you might call um, which could characterize as a head-on collision because the way theta is defined is you have a particle here, you have a photon that's coming in, um, incident, and then it, it could potentially bounce to any other direction. And theta is defined as the direction between the incident photon propagation direction and the outgoing photon propagation direction. So when theta is 180 degrees, the outgoing photon is heading straight back in a kind of head-on collision. So I need a formula that's kind of the one formula that I don't have memorized and I, I don't expect the people to have memorized, just know where to find it and know the significances of these uh, formulas, what they mean and uh, when to use it. Uh, let me just uh, make sure to erase. Uh, I need to read a question to see what my data will be for this question. Okay. 
Okay, so we are considering company effect. It asks, what is the maximum, uh, what is the magnitude of maximum difference in the wavelength of incident electromagnetic radiation and scattered electromagnetic radiation? Hmm. Now, it might, um, if you're wondering, um, did this uh, not give you enough information? Because you know it didn't tell you how, what was the energy of the incident photon. Then I think uh, looking at the considering formula will be um, illuminating because this left hand side here it can be expressed as change of the or the difference in the wavelength. So it turns out everything on the right hand side. It only depends on this particle that the photon is scattering from. It doesn't depend on any properties of the photon. So if all you want is the difference in the wavelength, then you don't actually have to know anything about the incident photon. It's, um, I, I wouldn't have expected that without looking at this formula. So, okay. So I, I think I have everything I need. I guess uh, what I need to um, consider here is okay. So I'm looking at when this would be a maximum, this would be a maximum when cosine of theta is equal to minus one. So, so that, you know, one minus minus one, that's two. Um, so I'm looking at a situation where theta is equal to 180 degrees. And I hope that makes intuitive sense. If the photon is colliding head on with the electron then uh, as it uh, scatters right straight back, that's when it would lose the most amount of energy. So I, I guess I should apply. You, let me plug in the numbers in all from alpha so that I don't have to look up numbers and I don't have to worry about uh, uh, worry about units and whatnot. So let me be lazy for a bit, and I'll just uh, do this in all from alpha. Um, so the numbers I'm plugging in are okay. So the one minus minus one that's gonna be two times Planck's constant. If I think if I put in h, uh, all from alpha will understand. Divided by electron mass times uh, speed of light. I think everything will turn out. We'll see. So always check that Ofram Alpha understood you correctly to add uh, hours, all right, uh, use Planck constant. Assuming Planck, okay. So two times Planck constant per electron mass speed. Okay, I think that sounds right. Okay, and it's giving me the correct units meters. All right, uh, 10 to minus 12. I think that was already in my input thing. So all I need is 4.85. Oh, did I just give the answer for everyone? <laughs> but you know, go through this for yourself. <laughs> Hard X-ray photon has wavelength on the order of 0 0.01 nanometer. Okay, I guess let me just write it down. And I'm just gonna do a slight bit of rewrite as I'm writing it down. So 0 0.01 nanometer, so 0, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meter, which would be um, in terms of 10 to minus 12. Uh, I guess, is that picometer? Um, yeah, I think that's picometer. Um, so that should be 1, 0 times 10 to minus 12 meter. Okay. Uh, if an X ray photon of uh, wavelength, oh. I think this is meant to be randomized. So that's not always gonna be the same as this. <laughs> Scalars from an electron, what is the maximum percent change of the wavelength as it scatters? Okay, I think for the, I'm just gonna assume for the percent change, uh, what it's uh, meant to be is the change of the wavelength divided by, and this is where depending on the context, it could be different. Uh, are you dividing it by, the instant photon wavelength, the outgoing photon wavelength, the average of the two. Um, here, I think they mean to say the incident uh, photon wavelength. So I think I have everything because I already have the maximum difference and I have the incident um, uh, photon <laughs> wavelength. So, wow, that's a quite a bit of change. So 48.5%, I think. Um, 4.85 divided by 10. 
Okay. Yeah, that's quite a bit of change. Um, visible light photon has wavelength on the order of 500 nanometers. If a visible light of wavelength scatters from an electron, what is the maximum percent change of the wavelength as it scatters? All right. Um, so this, let me just rewrite it in the same way I rewrote it before. Is this even randomized? Hmm. <laughs> so that's a 500 times 10 to minus nine meter, which is a 500,000 times 10 to minus 12 meters. Um, all right, I think I have to do this one on a calculator or I mean, I, I could do it in, I could have tried to do it in my head, but I'm afraid I'm gonna make a, a, a power of 10 error. So I'm just gonna do 4.85 divided by 500,000 and then times 100 for conversion to percent. Um, that is quite small, 0 0.00097, 0 0.00097. And I hope this, uh, oh yeah, that's the additional note. Um, <laughs> so this uh, could be a, a way to explain, you know, why haven't we, uh, why do we not every day observe and notice Compton effect? Why do we not always notice that as the light scatters off of something that the wavelength is changing, colors changing? Um, Compton effect is more significant for the high energy photons, X-ray photons, gamma ray photons. Uh, for uh, visible photon, light photons, the, the effect is so small that it's uh, probably unmeasurable. It's definitely not noticeable by human eye. If you had a very sensitive spectrometer, maybe you can um, look for that difference, but otherwise it'd be difficult. So, but, so, you know, as I said at the beginning, this is kind of question where it's easy to do once you know the right formula to use. It's a kind of a number sense question. 